So Rare Frank was pretty much a contemporary of Hannah Greenbaum Solomon, um, though her life was organized differently. She is known as the first woman to preach from a pulpit in the U.S., which happened in 1890. And her career was also a part of this conversation about expanding women's sphere, in her case in particular, in terms of public ritual roles. Um, Ray Frank was born in San Francisco to Polish immigrants who were orthodox but open-minded. Um, she grew up in Sacramento and then moved to Nevada to be a teacher during the time of the gold rush. Um, there were very few Jews, so that experience really helped her be attuned to issues of prejudice and assimilation and how small Jewish communities could work to support one another. Um, in 1885, she returned to her family in Oakland and began working as a journalist and also as a Hebrew school teacher. And um, both of those areas of work got her more involved in Jewish communal issues in her teaching and her writing. So in 1890, her reporting work took her to the Pacific Northwest in uh, the fall, around the time of the high holidays, and she ended up in Spokane, Washington on the eve of Rosh Hashanah. And she was very upset when she got there to discover that although there was a Jewish community there, there were no services that were planned because the Orthodox and liberal Jews could not agree about how to hold a service together, and there weren't really enough people to hold two full services. Um, and when she expressed this publicly, someone that she knew there offered to find a space for services if she would agree to give the sermon, which she did. And as you might imagine, this attracted quite a large crowd, not only of Jews, also of Christians who were just curious to hear a woman preach. Um, and she gave a very powerful sermon that night about the need of Jews to overcome their differences and to work together to form community. And the community was so impressed with her words that they actually invited her to stay through Yom Kippur. And we'll point out at the end that we also have a go and learn lesson plan set based on her Yom Kippur sermon. Um, so the news of her preaching spread and attracted quite a bit of attention. Um, particularly because it happened during this time of rethinking women's roles and headlines called her the maiden in the temple and the Jewess in the pulpit and the girl rabbi of the golden west. Um, it was a time when there were changes happening in the synagogue and liberal synagogues, changes to family pews instead of separate seating. There were mixed sex choirs, confirmation for girls was beginning at this time. Um, and there was concern about the what was called the feminization of the synagogue, the fact that more and more of the people who were coming uh, to the synagogue were women, but there were still no official ritual roles for girls and women. So there was some tension around that, like all these women are here and what are they supposed to be doing? Um, so this really launched Ray Frank on a new career in which she traveled around the country speaking publicly, giving sermons and lectures in synagogues and community groups on religious subjects, not necessarily on women's rights, but on issues having to do with the Jewish community. Um, Frank insisted she was not interested in becoming a rabbi, despite the fact that people kept calling her, you know, the girl rabbi, um, and despite the fact that she did register for some court courses at Hebrew Union College, but people didn't really believe her, and she was brought into these debates on whether women could be rabbis, although, of course, we know that um, it took quite a bit longer, not until 1972, when Sally Prezan was ordained for there to be a, a woman rabbi in America. Frank herself actually held ambivalent and some contradictory positions on women's rights. Um, though she lectured widely about women in the synagogue, she said she didn't want to be a rabbi, that she thought it was a masculine role. She also did not support women's suffrage. And um, I think probably the most surprising uh, opinion she held was that married women should not work outside of the home. She was single at the time of this career of public speaking. And in fact, after she married, she did not uh, continue that kind of public work. Um, of course, that piece of her uh, career was made possible by the fact that she married at age 40, so she had a chance to have this other career before her marriage. Um, in the late 1890s, after nearly a decade of traveling around and speaking, she was quite exhausted, and she went to Europe to relax, and she met Simon Whitman there, and they got married, and in 1902, they returned from Europe to California, and in fact, Ray Frank did not go back to her work. She helped her husband with his work. He was a professor. She enjoyed being a faculty wife. Um, they moved to Champaign-Urbana, Illinois, and she got very involved in local community work especially in the Jewish community, um, and didn't go back to her public speaking roles particularly. Um, so it's, it's very interesting in that she proved that there are many different kinds of ways to support the Jewish community and to encourage deep Jewish conversations. And um, she felt strongly that there were some that were appropriate for women who were married and some that so, weren't. So again, here's the list of go and learn activities. It's under the education menu here. And the last one is on Ray Frank's Yom Kippur sermon. Um, and you'll notice that this is slightly different um, in that it has the three age-appropriate lesson plans here for middle school and high school, family, education, and adults. 
And then there's also a lesson plan for adult women specifically, which is great um, for sisterhoods or Rosh Chodesh group. Um, so I just wanted to let you know that that's there.